Okay, so I want us to quickly complete the session on the assignment I gave so that on Tuesday we'll do something else and we didn't repeat the same thing. So the reason for recording this video on the assignment. Okay, so the question goes, Jill walks at constant speed to her friend's house 120 meters away in 60 seconds. After talking to her, her friend for 30 seconds, she returns home at constant speed in 40 seconds. I draw a distance time graph for the motion. Then I, I draw a position or displacement time graph for the motion as well. All right. Now, the difference between displacement and then distance is that you know distance is a scalar quantity it only talks about the magnitude okay of the length or of the meters covered without direction and then displacement has to do with the magnitude as well as direction okay so for a movement Within the Cartesian plane, when a body moves from a point, maybe from the origin to another point B, the origin is the beginning point. Okay. If I'm to determine the distance, it's just the magnitude of this movement from point O to B. Now the displacement, which is change in the position of the body from O to B, has to do with the final position X of B, B is the final, minus the initial X of O. If the body moves from B to a point C, and here we are looking at movement in a straight line. Movement in a straight line. Okay. The distance, distance from the origin. From the origin is simply OB plus BC displacement of the body by the new position would have to be XC okay XC minus X Oh. So, basically what we are saying is that the displacement from the origin will be OC, okay, minus OB. Meanwhile, the distance is just, but here we subtract the initial from the final. So, the displacement of a body is the position of a body, okay, from a fixed point or from the origin. That is the difference. That is why when a body maybe moves from a point O to B and then returns back to returns to their origin okay total distance the total distance or distance covered in such a movement is ob plus bo if the body moves from o to b and then returns total distance covered we are looking at the magnitude so ob plus 
uh, BO within that given time. But if we have to de determine the displacement, delta X, delta X will be equal to the final, which is BO minus the initial, which is OB. And so this is equal to zero. Over here, we look at the direction. The direction OB is positive, and the direction of BO is negative. The same distance, but we are moving back to the origin. So that's the difference between displacement and distance. Let's apply it to the question. Let's apply this to the question. Geo works 100 and at a constant speed to her friend's house. So first, draw a distance time graph. So distance on the vertical against time on the horizontal you are looking at this is distance slash meter time slash second so she starts from a point Joe works at a constant speed to her friend's house 120 meters away so from where Jill started to her friend's house, we are talking about 120 meters. And she took 60 seconds to do this. So let's, let's assume this is 60 seconds. Now, Jill works at constant speed. Okay. So this is a constant speed graph. Don't forget this is distance time. And when the speed is constant, it means there is a constant angle, theta, between the time axis and then the time axis T and then the graph, or the, which represents the motion. And once theta is constant, then it means the speed would also be constant. But let's calculate for this constant speed. She took a time of this to make a distance 120. So the average speed, in this case, the average speed will be equal to the distance divided by the time. And so the, her average speed in moving from the, her starting point to the friend's house will be equal to 120 divided by 60. And this is equal to 2 meter per second, uh, meter per second. And so that will represent the angle theta or the slope. Or the, the average speed will be this, and it's a uniform. Then, from the friend's house, after talking to her friend for 30 seconds, she just spoke to the friend for that period, 30 seconds. She wasn't moving, wasn't covering any distance. So her velocity is certainly zero, okay? So on a distance or displacement time graph, when velocity is zero, the gradient, the gradient must also be zero. So 60 plus the 30 minutes used in talking to the friend. So within this period, there wasn't any further movement. And so the slope 
is zero. Velocity is zero. This is that part. Then, after talking to her friend for 30 seconds, she returns home at constant speed in 40 seconds. After talking to her friend for 30 seconds, she returns home at constant speed. She returns home, meaning that she returns to the origin. So, she will certainly cover the same distance which she took to get to the friend's house. But this is distance time graph. We are only looking at the amount of distance covered in all that. Okay? So, after returning home, what is the distance covered? Have another 120. Okay? Here, we are not interested in the direction. We are only interested in the quantity of movement or distance, meters covered. So, she took 40, 40 seconds to do that. So, 40 seconds plus 90 must give us 130. So, this is... This is 130. So, and what distance, what is the quantity or amount of distance covered? She covered 120 seconds again to return home. So, plus another 120, giving us 100 and 240. And what is the average speed here? So, average speed after returning home would be equal to the total distance she covered, 120 over the time used, 40. And this time, this will be 3 meter. Okay. So the gradient of this will be higher than this one. So this must be steepy. This must be a little bit steeper than the first one because got the average speed here one uh, two meter per second the average speed here must be so this must be steeper or uh, yes when you are drawing we, we must see all that so the the steepness of this must reduce so let's bring to create that difference let's bring the 60 here Okay, and we can still further improve this one so that it creates that difference. So in our case, in our case, we must change. So when you are you are actually drawing, we need to see all this. So distance. This is 240. So this is the distance time graph. So I repeat, for distance time graph, we are only looking at the quantity of distance covered. We are not, in, we are not interested in direction. So if there is another, it will just continue on and on. The quantity of distance covered within the given time. Now, displacement time graph. For displacement time graph, we are interested in direction. It's the position of the body from the fixed point or the origin. So, displacement M against Yes. Geo start from the origin. Then move to the friend's house. 120 meters away. 
okay having used 60 seconds to do that so 60 seconds 120 meters the average speed will still be 2 meters per second so the slope will be the same It bears the same resemblance as this first part. Then, after speaking to her friend for 30 seconds, I think I have to straighten out this a bit. So let's develop it better. Please, when you are doing this, you should not use free hand. Even though it's a sketch. Then for 30 seconds, she speaks. To her friend. Then from there. Let's listen to the last part. After talking to her friend for 30 seconds, she returns home at constant speed in 40 seconds. She returns where? Home. Back to the origin. So, this time she was going in this direction. Okay, now she is coming home. And when she gets home, I told you that displacement of the body, we are looking at the displacement, which is changing X, would be equal to her final position minus her initial position. So, the final position would have to return to the point where displacement will be zero. Where displacement would be zero, and displacement of the body is zero when it's when the graph just intersects the time axis. So T. Now, here because she is returning to her starting point, the velocity, the average velocity, will be negative. So it will be the same. The same time she took. 40 seconds so this will still be 130 this will still be 130 but the average velocity which will be 120 divided by 40 this time will be negative and so we'll have a negative slope we'll have a negative slope so for this Displacement time graph, this is it. Here, we are looking at, interested in the change in direction. Okay, the direction. This time around. And so, where, when, he, when she gets home, her final displacement will be zero because we'll, talk, we'll look at final displacement, which is 120 minus her initial displacement which is the same and so the displacement must be zero so this will be the displacement time graph and then the distance time graph for the motion so for distance time graph class we are only interested in the quantity of movement of of, or of motion of the particle. So we are only adding the distance covered from her house or the starting point to the friend's house. She spoke for, for 30 seconds. Okay. No distance is covered. The reason for which we have zero gradient. But after talking to her friend for 30 seconds, she walked home. 
for another she walked home and so where she is back to home will still be 120 but here we are only interested in the quantity of distance covered and so it goes on and on over here we are interested in the direction she is returning home so her move her starting point would oppose her ending point the reason for which the graph has to return to where at a point where the displacement is zero so this is the solution to the question i gave to the class thank you so much okay if you have any further concerns do not forget to send it to me through whatsapp so as to explain to you but please when you go to my channel please pass a comment okay and then subscribe because i need that to, i mean uh, to improve the, uh, the online tuition okay so i'll need your subscription i'll need your um, likes and i'll also need your comments okay thank you so much we'll have we'll continue on tuesday until then bye bye and take care